is on. <laughs> Hi everyone, so Helen's frantically finding her script for the we are going live. <laughs> the layout of this, this seminar this week is going to be mental. Thank you for joining us um, and welcome to the Brad Cracker webinar. So this week we've been seeing another really busy week on Grad Cracker. Um, and firstly, I'd like to bring to your attention a new area within the Career Centre. Now this is called the Career Coach. The Career Coach features advice from a range of our employers. The advice covers many areas from doing your research, online testing, starting the job and career progression. I've got a new chair for this. I really need to stop doing this. <laughs> Just okay. <wizzling> around. <laughs> I'm going to sit straight and, and not mess with my chair. Um, our colleague, just to go back to the career, um, the career uh, section, um, our colleague Hannah has written a summary each for each of the topics covered and has put them together in a brand new ebook called How to Become an Alpha Candidate. Um, so make sure the Career Centre, is you can be found in the top menu, make sure you go on after this webinar, check it out today and let us know your thoughts. So today, guys, we are joined by engineering consultancy Kundal. Really? Hello. Really. Come on, guys, that's the enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for this webinar. It's going to be, it's going to be a belter. We've got, we've got a Jordy, that says it all. It's, it's going to be exciting. Are you uh, through? Don't worry. <laughs> Helen's going to be on her best behaviour. Um, so we, Helen, I'm going to start with you, my love. So okay. who is Kundal? What would you say? Who you are? What do you do? I mean, I'm not going to lie, you've kind of stolen half my answer with the with the introduction. I mean, in a nutshell, we are <laughs> we are engineering consultants. So, um, you know, we, we're more on like the multi-disc side. So obviously we initially started out as being sort of building services, civil structural sustainability. Um, and we've obviously got a number of different specialisms within that as well. So acoustics, lighting, fire. So we basically like to say that we can do the entire sort of life cycle of any sort of building project. Um, established over sort of 40 years ago now um yeah. we are obviously we've got presence strongly in the uk and um, initially founded from sort of newcastle edinburgh and then obviously we've sort of expanded from there and um, so we have offices as far as sort of australia singapore um hong kong so we're, we've got quite a sort of a diverse mix we've got quite a few in, in europe as well um wow. and i guess our mission ultimately is to provide great opportunities for our people and um, create fantastic built environments and positively impact our communities so that is, in a nutshell, who Kundal are. Thank you, Helen. And just from, right. you mentioned that, you know, worldwide global mm. company, from a graduate's point of view, from our audience, mm. uh, do they have um, the opportunity to go and work abroad as well as part of the graduate programme and, and after the graduate programme? Yeah, it's probably one of the points that we I think we're, we're quite proud of. So, I mean, yeah. we've we've developed the graduate programme over a number of years and it's something that the HR and L&D team have, have worked quite closely together on. So, um, when we normally when we do the graduate assessment centers we do like a bit of a presentation at the start just to sort of give you a bit of an insight in the graduate program um, and it tends to be around sort of the 18 month mark once you've been with us that we open up the graduate rotations so from there it is literally a case of so my colleague Lynn in the HR team she tends to just extend an email out to the various international offices saying you know we've got so many grads this year do you have the capacity to, to, to do like a like a six month rotation because we don't like to do it too short because you don't really get that much out of a couple of weeks here and there mm -hmm. so we tend to try and try and aim for around sort of a six month grad rotation so yeah you if you know if your passion is to go over to Singapore and have experience what it's like to work over there then that's something that we will heavily support because you know everything's different I think in a different country the culture is different the working hours are different the projects are different you know so it's a fantastic opportunity that we always sort of try and try and plug whenever we whenever we do the graduate assessment centers you know so if it's something that you're interested in then we're fully supportive of yeah and it's worth speaking up then at the, the assessment center mm, definitely the ambitions and everything else brilliant 100%. Thank, thank you Helen. and um key achievements and over the past couple of years what would you say are kundal's key achievements and it could be you know projects that you've been working on or internal incentives that you've been running yeah i mean I guess one that we'll probably touch on a little bit later anyway, I mean, we've got like sustainability, our sustainability achievements are probably, you know, out there really for us. I mean, it's, it's something that drives the firm and drives a lot of the stuff that we do. But yeah. um, I know obviously we'll, we'll touch on a few as we, as we go through. But aside from that, I think something that we're really proud of is the Kundal Diploma. So that's something that obviously we've internally created. Mm -hmm. um, it's a program that aims to sort of upskill and empower our people in, in sustainable design, you know, giving participants sort of the technical knowledge. Um, it's based... The content itself was obviously being pulled together from various different individuals across the business, you know, so um, and it's it's CPD accredited as well now. So 
Yeah. And it's something that's not necessarily just open to our engineering disciplines. It's something that our support staff can get involved in as well. So mm -hmm. um, it's a I think it's roughly about 13 modules in total and um, mm -hmm. so you know you think you have about sort of two months to do each each module and it's something that the graduates are automatically auto enrolled on when when they join um, mm -hmm. it's a good one to sort of tick off under the under the belt so that's something that I guess that we're I would say that we're really really are sort of proud of but then yeah I mean you could talk about projects I mean the lists are endless when it comes to the projects that they work on it's such a diverse area I mean I guess for for us at the minute the sort of data centers critical systems is is massive yeah, i think it's one yeah. of our biggest sets you know biggest sectors that we're, we're working on at the moment um and admittedly i can't really go into too much detail about them because a lot of them are sort of quite confidential but obviously we've worked with some of the biggest tech companies in the world obviously including facebook um and then i think as we see more of a shift towards digital engineering that's obviously opening a lot more um diversity when it comes to the the projects and how we go about building those so things like you know stadiums roller courses olympic courses and things like that so um so yeah i guess in a nutshell that's that's, that's probably some of the, the proudest areas that we've got over the past sort of coming years but i mean i know I know, because Carla, I know you're going to ask me about sustainability. So obviously one of the key ones that we've had is obviously about the achievement of the net zero carbon accreditation, which yeah. I think with everything going on at the minute with the environment and the way things are turning out, especially the impact that the built environment has on that, it's something that we're really sort of proud to, to promote. So yeah. I don't want to say too much about it because I know that's going to follow on next. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're giving the game away. Helen. <laughs> I had to be forewarned. I need to be reined in. <laughs> Helen definitely needs prepping. <laughs> so, so the diploma that you've just mentioned, what, mm. what kind of, what does that cover? Is it um, like technical skills, soft skills? give us a bit more of an idea about that it's a whole range of different skills I think I mean I know one of the modules as well is um it's all based on like SimCity but I mean as much as I'm sitting here saying it guys you guys as a night like, yeah so rookie and um, Tim you, you guys are all sort of involved in it so if you want to pipe in and see what the sort of modules and stuff that you've been working on yeah so I've completed it now um so it's something like in between us completed it um <laughs> Yeah, I it, completed it, mate, and I thought about completed it. Mate. <laughs> hey, um, yeah. So, uh, so uh, I think we've. I was part of the. So I was part of the 2018 intake. So we finished it last summer. I think just before COVID, yeah. which means we missed the graduation, which was really sad. Aww. Yeah, it was a bit um, of a virtual graduation. I mean, normally yeah. the highlights because it's a bit of a. Normally group. we go get yeah. food or drinks or whatever but yeah. alas, get a bit rowdy i know I've got rowdy by myself in my room instead <laughs> what, what, um, what things did you learn then what what kind of modules did you cover off so one of them was i think I remember our first one was about uh, uh sustainability in the building environment so especially like in manchester the whole skyline is just uh, skyscrapers so it's talking about how sustainability Im impacts the built environment so things like embodied carbon did a whole module on that which is how much carbon it's like how much carbon a building contains so how much what's the carbon imprint of maybe a footprint of like the bricks they use the windows they use how often can you change them out so say if something's longer lasting then it's got a better footprint than something that has to be changed every five years yeah. uh we also did the sim city one was pretty cool we had to uh build a city using sim city and then as like a control and then we had to go through some training or look at some uh, resources and then rebuild it again using what we knew to see if it was any more sustainable if the ha happiness levels were better and uh yeah there was quite a lot going on uh, with there oh, wow. do you want to pipe in tim and yasa yeah. yeah so i uh started off doing the the diploma i did the first module which was the introduction to sustainability which is great um, and it was sort of uh, using other people in the, I'm in the Birmingham office, so I was uh, using other people from different disciplines within the Birmingham office, which was really, really good to be able to start sort of that networking process really early on uh, to get an understanding of what sustainability meant to me as a mechanical engineer, but also to others within, you know, sustain, uh, within sustainability, within structures, civils, you know, all those different things and how it impacts everyone. Um, I, it's sort of slightly on pause at the moment with, with COVID, but yeah. I think it's going to start ramping up again soon, which I'm really looking forward to and uh, finishing and then graduating. And hopefully it'll be a normal graduation ceremony. Fingers crossed. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's exciting. Thank, yeah, thanks, guys. Um, I'm going to, I'm not ignoring Yasser. I'm, I'm just bearing my time. I can see your little mute going on and on and on. And on <laughs> ignoring you. But what we'll do is, I know we said we'd cover off um, sustainability. This is a massive part of Kundal's beliefs and everything else. Now, just conscious that we've got a lot to get through with the grads. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I do want to stay with Helen from a recruitment point of view. So if we've got time at the end, we'll go back to the sustainability questions and everything else. Um, if oh, we right. don't, there's a massive sustainability part um, on the um 
Kundal hub on grad cracker. So there's, there's a specific page about sustainability. So if we don't get time to do that today, everybody go on to the hub and, and read about it there. Um, Helen, just sticking with you for one last question. Mm -hmm. um, recruitment process, obviously you've closed out now for this year. Yeah. Um, so that everybody's watching, make sure you go and follow Kundal. They'll be opening in September 2021 for us. 2022 start and it all gets confusing with these <laughs> and so just make sure you go on and follow them and then as soon as they open their opportunities in september you'll get an email and push notification so helen i know we're only in january mm -hmm. but if things stay the same with the covid situation what what does the recruitment process look like um for the next year I mean, funny enough, right now I think we're we're in quite a strong position. Um, mm. Admittedly, obviously, as soon as COVID hit, I think the same as everybody, everybody in the industry, it was all a bit of a pause. Um, we weren't too sure how much it was going to impact us as an industry. So recruitment-wise, it, it was sort of reined in a fair bit. Yeah. Um, whereas now, um, we've obviously, I think, from the back end of last year, it's massively ramped up. Um, and I think, I mean, I've been at Kundal now for about five and a bit years and we've got the most vacancies on our portal now than we've ever had in the yeah. entire time that I've been here, which is refreshing to see. And I think, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, if Boris keeps saying that the construction industry is going to remain open, then yeah. we shouldn't hopefully see too much of an impact in that um, that area. You know, we're still able to get out to sites. There's still the appetite there to, to for, the, for the projects. You know, we're still bidding for for projects left right and center and winning new work coming in so um you know it's it's really refreshing to see and fingers crossed it it remains that it remains that way going forward yeah fantastic and when just to give the students an idea so they can go on to the the, the grad cracker hub and find out about your opportunities and then when they click through and apply if they're if they are successful um during the application stage what 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 is the application process is it virtual interviews and things like that yeah so i mean obviously we, we've had to change our process a lot this year so this yeah. is the first time that it's probably the new the new sort of the new approach to the graduate assessment center so normally um you'd obviously you'd apply online you'd answer a few um job screening questions just things about you know there's a lot of focus again on sustainability and and um, what it means to you um, and then from there you'd get shortlisted for like an online assessment which you can just do at home it takes about an hour in total there's about sort of two different tests that you can do um and then after that so that's the stage that we're at right now so we're just currently reviewing all the scores um and then you'll be invited to a virtual a virtual graduate assessment center mm -hmm. um previously it used to be very much a, a whole day experience so obviously these guys that's what they went through so yeah. um you know it was quite a long quite a long day we tried to make it as enjoyable enjoyable as possible I appreciate you know assessment and enjoyable doesn't really go hand in hand with each other but you know we try and make it so that people are still sort of engaged by the end of the day and not crying their eyes out <laughs> um so yeah so the the virtual one we're sort of splitting it a little bit so where um, maybe you'll be online for like a couple of hours and then depending on how that stage goes, you'll then sort of get invited to a second stage, which will be like your interview and presentation with some of the sort of hiring managers and the partners of the firm. So, yeah, it's 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 very new. I think it's very much of a learning process for us at the minute and the resourcing yeah. team. But it's something that we're, we're excited about and, you know, we're, we're sort of proud to proud to deliver in the next coming weeks as it were actually yeah definitely thanks Helen and the um, the guys are going to tell us a little bit more about their um, application <clears throat> process and what they went through and this got, they've got some really exciting stories to tell so I shall leave that to Sophie to quiz the graduate graduates a little bit later on um, in the webinar and there's a couple of pages before we move on to introducing the grads who some of them have already spoken and um, on the on the hub there's two pages that I really want to highlight um, to the audience that I really like and um, so there's the graduate testimonials there's some really good comments on there from the from the graduates some quite quite funny little snippets as well so make sure you go, go on there and have a look at those um, and another area is life at Kundal and I think you know I've, I've mentioned that I've been a grad cracker for quite a while now and life at Kundal um, is one of of the pages where it really good does give you a really good insight you know Kundal was one of the first employers to put one of these types of pages together and um, with the blogs and things like that so definitely go and have a look and um, make sure you do your research you know now and towards the beginning of September when Kundal open their opportunities so thank you guys thank you very much Helen we're going to join you at the My end pleasure for the interesting facts mm -hmm. that are making good and what we're going to do now is we're going to meet the grads <laughs> which I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. So, Rikea, start with you, my love. Hello. I know, you know this is coming. So, <laughs> we, it's not a shock. <laughs> <laughs> which university did you go to? What did you study? And what is your role at Kundal? 
Mm. So I went to Loughborough University, um, which is the Midlands. And I did electrical electronic engineering. I did like a, I did an MEng, so it was integrated. So it was uh, four years plus um, a placement year. So I did five years altogether. Yeah. And then after that, I joined Kundal in 2018. Uh, some September t- uh, 2018, uh, joined as a graduate electrical engineer. Um, and as of December, I'm now an engineer um, and I'm working a six month uh, rotation in the security team. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And we're going to find out more about the placement that you did and obviously about your, your current role um, at Kundal a little bit later on. So thank you for that introduction. Um, Yasser, same to you, my love. So where did you study? What did you study? And what is your current role? So uh, I studied at Manchester University. Yeah. And I studied electrical and electronic engineering. So it was a, also an MN like, like Rukaya. Um, spent a year in, on placement and then I joined Kondo last year in 2019 after graduating. Yeah. Okay. And I'm currently working as an electrical, graduate electrical engineer at Kondo. Perfect. Thank you very much. And Tim, smiley Tim, same <laughs> you. You've a different story, haven't you? Yeah, so I, I went to the University of Nottingham. Uh, I spent my four years uh, basically doing like a combined degree. So I initially went in thinking I want to be an architect, came out thinking I do not want to be an architect. But luckily I did a degree which was, as I say, four years and it had a master's in environmental engineering in with it, which is sort of focusing on mechanical engineering. Um, so that was great for me. And that has now meant that I'm now a graduate mechanical engineer um, in the Birmingham office, which basically means doing sort of heating, ventilation, air conditioning, things like that. Uh, presenting to clients and uh, you know doing computer work doing calculations and, and some BIM modeling as well. Fab. We're going to find out more about BIM modeling later on. <laughs> Not missing that trick. <laughs> Thank you very much everybody. Um, yeah great introduction great start really looking forward to this. Sophie batters over to you. Thank you very much, Carla. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm really looking forward to hearing more about all of your stories. So we're going to dive right in um, and find out what initially attracted you all to Kundal. So Rikea, you found your role through Grad Cracker. And one of the things that attracted you to Kundal was the office spaces and reading some of the other graduate stories. Um, but in particular, what was the kind of main attraction that, 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 that drove you to apply to Kundal? Mm. So for Kundal, I think the fact that they, they champion sustainability so much um i think as well you know when it comes to graduating and you're applying to all these different companies sometimes just the application process itself sets the company apart so say i applied anyway because as you do you apply for everywhere you can um it was pretty uh straightforward i'm pretty sure i don't know if it was you helen who messaged me or somebody else but there was a point where I wasn't sure I could make the assessment centre because um, I had an event the night before that I'd organised for the university. Mm-hmm. And they'd been really accommodating. They said, oh, that's fine, just come in half an hour late. We'll sort out assessment so you can do a task later. And I was like, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I went in and I've been to assessment as before and it was so well planned and so well organised. The people were so lovely. And it was just really welcoming, which is like, it goes a long way, I think. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I wasn't sure I wanted to apply. And Steve Steve Maddox, who's a partner in the Manchester office, was my interviewer that day. And he said, well, come down come down to our office in Manchester and we'll see, see what you like. Um, and they had pictures of the offices online anyway. So already I was like, okay, it's probably going to be quite a nice... Well, you have this preconception of offices being stuffy and boring and there's no light. But having seen Kundal online, you think, okay, they they know a bit about office buildings. I went in and the colour scheme was amazing. This sounds really geeky. The colour scheme was amazing. And the (laughs) furniture, wow. (laughs) Um, But yeah, and then the people we talked, I talked to while there, because Steve like organised for me to talk to all like previous grads who were there and they were so lovely and welcoming. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's probably the people that attracted me the most. That's brilliant. No, that's great. And I think that's a really good point about how important um, the the recruitment process can be in, for a graduate when they're going through it to choose their employer. Um, and like you said, you know, you, most graduates will be applying to a number of different firms and, you know, to have that really positive experience will set an employer apart. So well done, Kundal. Um, <laughs> Come on, team resourcing. <laughs> um, so Yasser, over to you. Your attraction was more due to the fact that you really wanted to work in the building services industry. Um, could you tell me about what projects attracted you and what made you choose Kundal over maybe other um, companies that operate in the sector? So um, when I had a look at the projects on Gradcracker, 
and sorry, on the Kondo website. I was really interested in the project in the healthcare sector because it was very interesting to see how Kondo designed buildings for actual people to use and to benefit society. So that was really interesting, particularly the Hong Kong Children's Hospital, which was just a great design. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was just very interesting to see how things I learned in a university could be applied to real people to use in real life. Yeah. And something else that attracted me at Kondo was, was really the fact that we did not take any project within unsustainable industries, such as oil and gas and other things. And to me, that was really important because at university, I was really interested in uh, sustainable engineering. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the two main things. Fantastic, that's great. Um, and finally, Tim, you um, moved your focus, as we heard, from architecture to the engineering side of things. So can you tell us a little bit more about why you did that and then why Kundal was the employer for you? Sure. So, I mean, I moved from architecture to engineering because, A, I, I enjoyed it a lot more at university. So it was uh, sort of a lot less stressful, which is which is always good. Uh, but also there's a lot uh, less um, or there's a lot more of an impact that you can make with the engineering side of, of building uh, services. And I felt, found that that's really where Kundal had its sort of its peak, was that it put that environmental ethos in really early stages of projects. So within arch architecture, so zero to seven, say so sort of zero to about two, you're gonna make 90% of the carbon impact. After that's probably about 10% and you're gonna do most of the work. So I really like that Kundal got in really early to projects to make, you know, to, to make, a, make good of that carbon incentive. Uh, and I also really liked that, um, specifically for the Birmingham office, so it's a, about 100-ish people, which was a really nice number for me. It's nice and settling that you can know everyone, you can talk to everyone, feel comfortable, but you're not in a tiny little team stuck away in an office and, you know, dealing with five people day to day, you're dealing with, you know, 50 people day to day. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels more like a family rather than like a, a giant sort of mega corporation where you're sort of one cog in a machine. Yeah. No, that's really important. I think um, it can be when you look at organisations like Kundal from the outside and you see these incredible projects and, you know, what a, a big organisation Kundal is and um, that it can be quite scary, can't it? But, you know, that sort of experience of, you know, hearing from people like yourself, Tim, that, you know, when you're actually there, it is like a family and that's what everybody really is looking for, isn't it? So fab. OK, so. Um, Moving on to your roles at Kundal. So, Rakea, back to you. You work within building services and more specifically the security team. But what does, does that really mean? Okay. So, so I worked in building services from 2018 to December. No, I think September just gone. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I'm in the six-month rotation with security. So, it's a different team, but ah. also a subset. At the same time, it's a specialism. Um, so the way building services works, especially um, in the off in Manchester office, I don't know if it's, it's I think it's different in London. Um, we all get given jobs, and there's uh, electrical, mechanical, and public health sectors of the same project. So I would be on the electrical team with my senior engineers and my principal engineers, and we would go through from start from stage uh, one to five, perhaps and design the electrical side of a building from ground up. So, you know, um, that includes containment for cables, the lighting design sometimes, which is quite fun. Um, there was also fire designs as well, um, power design. So you where, where sockets go, make sure that everything can be um, powered by a substation or a generator or whatever. And that's basically what building services is. So it's like, so what I say to people when they say, what do you do? I say, well, if, if, if architects make it look nice, uh, we make it work. Mm. And then- yeah. Smiling away there. <laughs> yeah. That's that's that was going to be me, that was going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but then security itself. So security is also a subset of electrical building services. So I did a bit of that when I was in building services, but now that I'm in security specifically, like Helen was saying, we do a lot of jobs for data centers and security is pretty important data centers it's crazy secure to go into those places so right now i'm working a lot on bim stuff um i don't know if tim's gonna talk about it later or something but like revit autocad looking at door types of doors and security wiring and paneling and it's quite good but i'm i'm, I'm supporting a senior engineer basically in design mm. but yeah it's interesting great stuff um I think we're going to hear more about the data centre work now as well as when I speak to Yasser, but I am just going to come back to you and say, what is BIM? Because 
I think a lot of people on the webinar might not be completely familiar with that. And it is something that we're going to touch upon. But if you just give us an overview now, then Rakea, then that's kind of bottomed off. <laughs> yeah, so, so BIM, these are buzzwords, I can't remember off the top of my head. BIM, BIM <laughs> stands for Building Information Modeling. Yeah. So it's basically, um, you basically build a building virtually, including all the cabling, everything like that using a software called Revit, for example, which is a 3D software. Mm -hmm. And you can slice each floor so you can get 2D views and then all of it together builds in a central model. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's basically modeling a building. Great stuff, thank you. So now we've got that covered. If it comes up again, everyone should have some idea of what it is. <laughs> Um, so Yasser, I'm going to come to you next. Um, so you are part of the critical systems team and a large part of your role is working on designing the data centres from what I understand. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because we've heard, you know, Helen's mentioned it, Rikea has mentioned it, you know, what, what does your role involve and what is the critical systems team overall? So um, our role is quite, my role is quite similar to Rukaya's in the sense that I'm also an electrical engineer and mm -hmm. will do building services, but for critical systems. Yep. So critical systems uh, refers to mission critical systems, which is the most important part of a business for it to function. So for example, uh, Helen mentioned Facebook earlier, that would be data centers because they need the server infrastructure to run 24 seven to yeah. hold all that information. So we look at that and we design it electrically, we design the power distribution to those server racks mm -hmm. and also the, the cooling within the building because the server racks can get really, really hot. Mm -hmm. So me the mechanical engineers will, will design that and, and electrical engineers need to provide power to all that equipment. Yeah. Um, so part of my role has, at Kondo has been really to support more senior engineers in making those designs. Like yeah. uh, Rokaya said, electrically, we get involved in lighting, um, fire alarm, and small power, and also, but, but also the whole distribution system from the, from the generators and the grid transformers all the way down to the sockets in each data holder in the kitchen and all, all those things. So we need to <laughs> we need to look at each level of the system and step down the voltages and basically make sure everything works. <laughs> it's quite quite complex from the sounds <laughs> of things. <laughs> um, and have you been in the, the same team since you joined in 2019? I haven't. So I've also did done a rotation for a few months, I think three months in the security team. Mm -hmm. But similarly, I was also looking at data centers in the security right. team because security is quite important in data centers. And in in the security team, I was looking at uh, video surveillance. So making placing cameras and doing calculations for cam uh, camera lenses. Mm -hmm. And in there, you need to think about where you need to put your camera and what you want it to do, whether you want to identify someone or just know whether someone has been injured in a room, wow. things like that. Yeah. And you also look at access control and in the security team. We also do work not only on data centers, but in offices and banks and look at the security system for banks. Fantastic. So I did three months in the security team and then went back to critical systems because I love it so much. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, that sounds like, you know, in the, in the first year or so of being at Kundal, you've had some amazing experiences so far. Um, right, Tim, back to you. So as a mechanical engineer, um, can you tell us a little bit more about your current role at Kundal? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been working sort of since I joined uh, just over a year ago in lots of different sectors. So I've been within one team sort of managed and being able to sort of uh, ask, you know, senior engineers within my team questions about these different things. But I've been working in uh, sort of educational buildings, so it's building a new uh, institute uh, for secondary school with innovative uh, design methods. Uh, working on residential schemes, so working on uh, you know apartment blocks and trying to get get those serviced all, all uh, correctly. Been working on net zero carbon office buildings, so you know really big scale um, uh, sort of skyscrapers and trying to make sure that they have really really low carbon gains. Working you know sort of with architects, with structural engineers, sometimes internal, sometimes external. Um, and I've been, uh, you know, sort of flipping between those different sectors, which is one of the things I really loved about Kundal is that they're not just one sector based. Yeah. Is that, you know, you can dip into those different things that take your interest, which, you know, if you're interested in something, you're going to be that much more passionate and that much more sort of in interested and uh, involved in the decision making yeah. process. Um, 
and the, the role that I play at the moment. So I've been sort of starting maybe with my first six months, I sort of started helping other engineers do their calculations, do the design decisions, asking loads of questions as you should do. Um, and then, so I've then used that understanding that I've gained over those sort of, you know, six months a year. And now I'm sort of, sort of starting to design my own systems completely from scratch using those methods that I've learned and things that I've learned at university that were really useful uh, to actually, you know, design things more independently and then just get them checked by other people. So it's been been really a really nice sort of learning curve. Yeah, it's yeah. Place. Quite a lot of experience as well already in your first year or so. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, yeah. Thanks so much for that, guys. It was great to hear. You know what you're currently doing. Um, we're going to go back in time a little bit now. Um, as all of you, as part of your studies, um, did some sort of placement or work experience, but not actually with Kundal, which is quite interesting. So you all worked in um, different sectors before joining Kundal. So, for example, Tim, you did your placement in architecture, Rikea in a multidisciplinary engineering company, which is incredibly difficult to say. Um, <laughs> and Yasser, um, you worked in automotive. Um, so what I kind of really want to know is why did you then choose to kind of move out of those sectors and then into building services um, and um, working within Kundal? So Rikea, starting with you. Yeah, so this is going to be, I don't know, it'll be the, the kind of answer you're looking for, but... So for me, I work for ground transport. So I was working at a place called Talis in London. Um, London's an amazing place to live, by the way. Um, didn't know that until I moved there for a year. <laughs> so I, I think that's the main thing about placement. It's nice to get out about away from your hometown, away from your, your university town. So that's a really important part of placement, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I worked in the ground transport. So we were contractors for the London Underground. I think it was communications and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, as most places, the people were lovely, but I think the boring, the work was quite boring for me, uh, only because it wasn't very technical, um, a lot of spreadsheets and things like that. Mm -hmm. So when I came back from uni to uni after that placement, I was like, okay, I'm gonna make sure I get somewhere that's technical. Yeah. And looking at building services, especially like uh, like condo, people get stuck in. Like I've already managed some projects in my first, like in my first year, I was I was like designing projects, which I had never done in a whole year of working at this other place mm. um so i think my motivation was finding somewhere where you could do technical things and really get stuck in yeah and billing services allowed that great stuff um so yasser to you next um what made you move outside of um working in automotive to move into building services and working with Kumbal? so um i did my i did my placement in the automotive industry in a, a sort of company that manufactured parts for the automotive industry. So that was at a time where um, the market was shifting to um, fuel, so gas um, vehicles into electric vehicles, mm -hmm. but it did not really feel like it was a stable industry and would fit into my future career plans. Mm -hmm. So it didn't, I didn't really see it that way. So when I heard about Kendall and heard about the building services, it's because I did not actually know about building services, <laughs> too early in my career um i then i, I did feel like um something that i could see myself doing for a long time because we're always going to need buildings and build yeah. things so that was the that was one of the things that attracted me to the construction industry the other things was that the london office looked really nice so yeah. Fantastic. It's an interesting thought that, isn't it, that, you know, you, you kind of looked really far ahead as to, you know, what is going to be a really sustainable career of, of you know, what do we all, are we always going to need? And yeah, buildings, they're always going to be there. So <laughs> it's an interesting way to look at it. Um, and finally, Tim, why, we've kind of heard that you've moved outside of um, architecture. Was there a particular reason that kind of struck it off, apart from that you just found the engineering side of things a bit more, more interesting? <laughs> Yeah, so so I did um, my placement. Uh, it wasn't in the university course, but it was in the summer in between them. Right. Uh, yeah. In, in like a small little architecture firm in Shropshire, which I, I enjoyed, but it was it was just the three of us and a dog sometimes. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was really fun. It was really great being able to you know talk to contractors and sort of make those design decisions. But I felt that the the impact that I was making on these buildings that it was relatively small. It was mm -hmm. sort of you know small design details, which which obviously you know it's great makes the building not leak and things. But um, I, I sort of wanted to have more of an impact sort of globally at that at that sort of scale, and I felt that Kundal you know could really give that to me within the building service sector. Um, I, I also felt that uh, I guess working in a really really small team 
is very uh, personal, but also it's uh, less flexible with sort of workload. So if there's a lot of workload, if there's only three of you to share it with, then that th those three of you are going to be working a lot. Or if yeah. there's none, then invert inverses and it goes down to like nothing. Whereas working in a medium sized sort of uh, consultancy like Kundal, where you know they have offices to share the, share things around internationally or nationally. Uh, it really means that, you know, you're going to get a, a more um, consistent workload over time, which sounds sort of a bit technical and something you, I, I certainly didn't think of at university level, but yeah. it's something that affects the day to day working of your life. So yeah. you know, it makes a big impact going forward. If you have really high workloads and really low workloads, that's yeah. you know going to uh, put pressure on that work life balance. So uh, Kundal can kind of solve that one. <laughs> Great stuff. Um, looks like we lost Rakea there for a second, but she's back, so that's great. Sorry, good old Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, okay, fab. Well, that's really interesting as well, Tim. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to now move on to the journey to Kundal. So I'm going to stay with you, Tim, on this one, um, and we're going to talk more about the recruitment process that you all went through. Um, now, I know as part of the interview process for yourself, Tim, you um, had to do some team puzzles. So can you tell us a little bit more about those? You did. Uh, so, yeah, so it's basically obviously um, in an interview centre, which was in the London office at, at the time, and it was with people that I'd never met. Uh, before but it was sort of similar level to me and similar interests so that was that was good uh but the puzzles consisted of uh things i remember one of them which was uh, everybody was given like a set of cards and uh i seem to remember it was a while ago now but i seem to remember that they had um sort of like numbers on and they had to add up to a certain amount or your resourcing of time had to add up to a certain amount so then you got your resourcing correct within the group and you had to swap like a card at a time with people that you never met before uh, which was a great sort of icebreaker exercise, but also, you know, you're being watched. So obviously you're trying to uh, make sure that you do it effectively and calmly and professionally. Um, so I, I found that really fun. I think in the end, we got it pretty close to working out exactly, but not not perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously that seemed to be enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're, watch they're not just watching to see whether you can complete a task, are they? You know, you, you know they want to see how you work together. That's, yeah. that, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the assessment process, correct me if I'm wrong, Helen, will be, you know, seeing how... Um, the grads interact with one another and how they come to decisions rather than getting it absolutely 100% perfect on the on the day. <laughs> yeah, massively so. I mean, I think that's that's the main aim, I think, of that, of the game, obviously, that, that Tim's referring to there. It's not necessarily, I mean, yes, okay, they get an extra bonus point if they manage to make it to the end, but it's <laughs> it's not, um, it's not the, the whole purpose of the, of the, of the exercise. But um, that is actually one thing that we've changed this year, because obviously, we don't have the cards um, this year. So we've, we've got a slightly, slightly different interactive game this year so it should be interesting to see <laughs> and i'm also over the moon about because the amount of times that we lost those cards <laughs> <laughs> frantically searching in the, the morning it didn't work out you're like oh god <laughs> great um also tim during the day you had to give a presentation on your dissertation um so what did you do your dissertation on and how did you prepare for that presentation yeah, so luckily I'd done my dissertation sort of the year before I finished because my last year was architecture and the penultimate right. year was my kind of final engineering year. So I, I had that all sort of ready to go, which, which was nice. Um, and so I did my dissertation on a, a sanded office sort of floor in Nottingham and how to design a photovoltaic backed Louvre system to ensure that the daylighting through the uh, floor plate would be at its optimum based on glare and based on, you know, um, having too much light, too little light, that sort of thing, but also in terms of energy generation. So it was quite specific to Nottingham, but obviously you can change some, some parameters and it would uh, be able to move around the world. Um, so I gave uh, my presentation at the time to, uh, I think it was a couple of, it was, I think a project engineer and it might, might have been an associate. Um, and uh, I uh, basically prepared a uh, Petra Kutcher style presentation. So it kind of flicked over every 20 seconds or however long it was. So it made sure that I was keeping on time. And I prepared that in, in beforehand. I know that, um, that that some people like sort of ad lib it, but I wanted to know what I was going to say when. So I didn't have any notes or anything to go off, which which I think um, stood out well. Mm -hmm. uh, and also to prepare that, I uh, made 
and this is based on my architecture sort of um, understanding of how things work, I made some handouts. So then people could flick through things, look at different diagrams, look at different representations as I was going through it. So if what I was saying was boring, I don't think it was, but if it was, <laughs> then they could have a little look in the, in the booklet. And also, you know, that was another factor that I felt sort of brought what I was saying to, to the next level. Yeah. Great stuff. No, it sounds like there's some good tips there for any students that are going to be going through that, that process of having to do presentations at assessment centres, you know, making sure you're prepared, making sure that you do have some handouts, practice, practice, practice. Um, so that's great. Thank you very much for that, Tim. Um, so, Rakea, I'm coming over to you now because um, you had to take some undertake some sort of problem solving exercises during the interview process. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Mm. So the problem solving the ones themselves, I couldn't quite, I'm pretty sure what we did was we had a, it kind of tied into um, observational skills. So we got a set of A note drawings, pretty big ones, and it was uh, like a whole site. Um, and it had things such as, um, you know, substations on there, different equipment, different mechanical equipment. And we had to go through each uh, sheet and each layer was a different um, thing that it was showing. And basically point out where we think things were wrong mm -hmm. so um things like well you can't have a substation on a railway track that's a bit strange so you like <laughs> circle it um it was many things like that i think problem solving i can't remember i don't know if helen you could help with that or is that cheating <laughs> no, you're right. yeah i mean so i know that i know the one that you're talking about because I, I we used to be quite cruel and set that one at the beginning of the day and it just used to sort of feel yeah, like I dread i think mm, <laughs> when, yeah, when everyone because yeah it was you know, you know we like to keep on your toes with you. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so yeah that that was very much a case that we use that mainly as a base to just try and identify i guess people's current level of understanding when it comes to building services because we appreciate yeah. it's not necessarily something that you're geared towards at university but it's just so that we can get that ground in it as to know you know if you even if it's like looking at the right sort of points you know even if it's not 100 percent, but you know your mindset is there and you obviously you're able to recognize where you're sort of identifying where there where there may be issues on the on the problems but mm. that and i think mixed with a bit of an information management exercise that we did later on where you have to extract bits and pieces of information for yeah so, um they're probably the probably the key ones i guess from the problem solving side of things great stuff um so I'm going to finally shoot over to Yasser whilst we're looking at the interview process. Because um, obviously we've heard about some of the actual logistics of the day, you know, some of the, the, the things that you might be tasked with. But looking back, do you have any hints for students that are thinking that they're going to be going through this process in the next few weeks? And what would you say to, to past Yasser? <laughs> uh, well, actually, I'm going to go back to the assessment centre and that the task team was talking about, which yeah. was... Um, Collaborate, a collaborative task essentially yeah. and on the day you might feel like you have to be the most dominant person in the room and just get your team because you it was actually a teamwork and you have to get your team to uh, complete the task but I don't think that's really the case at Kondo because one of our core value is collaboration so yeah. my hint would be to focus on your ability to work well and respectfully with others actually and actually about that there's a new video on the grad carcass page and that was made about end of last year i think yeah. yeah and i recommend people go look at it because it talks about our core values there and those are things we adhere to or try to adhere to day to day within kondo fantastic now that's something i was just going to say before you went on to say that i was like you know if, make sure you do check out a company's core values because they can come in really handy when you are looking at um, going through the recruitment process. And it's obvious that that stood out to you during the, during the process as well, Yasser. So thank you very much for that. Um, I am going to skip over a question here because I'm just really concerned about time. And there's just something that I want to um, get ask you guys before I hand back to Carla and Helen for the kind of last part of the webinar. Um, but we've heard some amazing things from you guys about what you've been doing. I can't believe how quickly the time's gone today. It just has absolutely flown past. Um, so we've heard about what initially attracted you, your roles within the business. Um, but I think it'd be great to hear how you put these things into action. So um, if you could all give me an example of, you know, one of the highlights over the last few years, what's your favourite project or your favourite experience? Um, so Rakaya, I'm going to start with you again. Yeah, so my favourite, favourite, project of all time which still hasn't come to fruition because of covid uh is a place in manchester called printworks which is like a they call it an arcade but it's an indoor center where they have cobble streets and they've got bars and 
mini golf they've got a cinema all sorts of things and it and because i grew up here i remember going to print when i was like 10 and seeing ice age um maybe i was younger than that um so it's something i've grown up with and then being told i was being put on it and this is also the project that my principal engineer who's my mentor he said well you just go ahead just go ham uh, do the design yourself and i'll check back with me whenever you've got a problem and obviously i'll go through it and make sure it's all correct yeah. but it was just great having free lease with something that already like meant something to me because it's it's quite nostalgic yeah. um so yeah that's probably my favorite project is because it was a pretty cool one as well where they're replacing the whole ceiling with an, a massive led screen oh, wow. so a lot of load calcs and things like that sadly it's not happened because of covid but hopefully next year yeah in future when things go back to normal yep. <laughs> yeah. brilliant and Yasser over to you what was your what's your kind of highlight been over the last few years um so over the last year so when I joined initially I was joined within uh, the critical systems teams and I was working on data centers so I was working on this data center in Denmark and I was supporting the engineer in doing lighting calculations mm -hmm. and which was very interesting because I had never thought you need to do calculations for lighting and think about how that actually impacts the room but uh, that was actually a really good project because I learned a lot from that and my manager at the time actually took the time to took some time to explain to me the process of doing calculation and talk to me through the different regulations and guides and that was actually I actually really appreciated that because people don't always get time and I remember at previous um, placements, I didn't actually, I sometimes was just left out to my own devices and yeah. that wasn't great. Um, and then when I had my rotation later in the year within the security team, I got to work on the same building again. So that was really strange because and you already knew the building. Normally when you get a project, you don't really know the building. So you have to get familiar with the different rooms and how it works. And I was doing the video surveillance within that building. That was really interesting because I already knew it, but then it got me thinking about how different disciplines within Kondo collaborate with each other. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was, that was one of my favorite projects, basically. Brilliant. And um, finally, Tim, over to you. What's your favorite project or, or highlight been? So I think that uh, recently, um, I, I, as I said before, uh, we've been sort of working on net zero carbon buildings and especially office buildings. And one of the most important things within that is a, a really early stage in the process that you define sort of what systems are going to go in and what impacts that will have on with, within different people in the design process, architects, engineers, all those sort of people. And uh, to be able to communicate that really quickly, um, I sort of developed a bit of a design tool to be able to produce uh, sections really quickly without having to actually sketch anything but sort of click layers on and off to to represent the the system that you want to put in and then they can be added then into presentations really quickly so you can talk to an architect and say you know if this is a clear soffit then is that part of your architectural scheme do you want that mm -hmm. um and that's had a real big impact on this project and then it's also sort of uh been forward and disseminated through the rest of the uh the company with uh, what's called the Kundal excellence award um, so I won my category in that, which was the Digital Engineering uh, Award. Um, but now it's going to be used, you know, internationally uh, for sections and office buildings and any early stage sort of design process. So that, you know, is something which I found from a project that I've done and was important to me. And I've, you know, given it off to the rest of Kundal and now it's important to them too, which is great. <laughs> That's brilliant. What a great achievement. Well done, Tim. Yeah, well done. <laughs> um, brilliant. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure hearing from you guys today. Um, I've really enjoyed hearing about all of your journeys and, and what you've been up to and um, just the type of things that you can do at Kundal, some of the things that I maybe wouldn't have really understood that were involved in, in, in that process. So um, I'm going to hand back to Carla now. Thank you. Thanks very much, guys. It's been really insightful. And um, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> Pretty webinar, which is the key for these webinars. Um, so what I would like to do is finish off with the graduates um, and, and Helen, of course, to ask about the key facts about Kundal that the outside world might not know. So <laughs> Helen's, Helen's been frantically on the phone to all the colleagues to say, what was really excited about Kundal? It's <laughs> pressure, man, trying to think of, a, trying to think of something. <laughs> I think of something as well that's like, corporally acceptable as well and not just oh god I can't believe you said that I'm gonna get done for <laughs> yeah. um, right I'm gonna I'm gonna start with you Helen what is the key fact what is it exciting about Kundal uh well maybe not necessarily exciting but I guess one that may, maybe people might not be aware of is it's kind of harking back to that sort of family feel mm -hmm. um about the organization is a lot of our offices in the UK and internationally have commenced because they've, they've all basically been um 
organically grown as it were so you know individuals if it's like associate associate director partner level if say they've maybe relocated back home or maybe they're just actually moving to a different part of the world um a lot of our offices have kind of been created that way so say somebody's been based in the uk but they're actually from brisbane australia so they've mm-hmm. actually flown over and said look i want to return home i want to make a go of it can you will you support me and the you know the idea behind that is like yes if you can win the work you can bring in the projects more than happy so that's basically how all our offices well majority of our offices have grown so it's not wow. you know which is quite a nice it's quite a nice way it's, it's nice to know that they're, they're open to that sort of consideration you know it's very much a case of look if you can go and you think the work's there then by all means we've got no hesitation to go for it you know so that's that's how pretty much all our offices have have, have commenced that's wow. a fun and cool fact there you go oh i like that that's a good one <laughs> <laughs> you also have group delivery days at the newcastle yes. office we, well not just newcastle so um most of the, i think pretty much all our offices we all get um we all get fruit baskets so yeah you get free fruit which i think is pretty well i quite like it oh. i mean so yeah so you get a mixture of, like bananas <laughs> apples oranges depends on the season you know they'll chop and change <laughs> So it's a bit of That's surprise. Really <laughs> yeah. If it's in the summertime and they're in season, you know, happy days, skip around the office when they've got a couple of raspberries and blueberries knocking around. So. <laughs> Thanks, Helen. Um, hey, let's go on to you. What's your key fact? So my, my housemate's from also from Cundall, so he's like heckling me from behind saying what the oh. facts I could say. But you told me a lie, so I'm not going to say it now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, so... The fact I have is that we have a ping pong table, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure London have. A, uh, I don't know if you have a ping pong table anymore, do you? I'm sure, there's a foosball table and some like pinball uh, machines. There's a foosball table and a pinball machine. The ping pong table yeah. went downstairs. Yeah. Oh, that's just interesting. Edinburgh. Got- I think there's also a snooker table. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, Edinburgh Edinburgh's got-, got a pool table, and then another one about Manchester specifically. It was their 15th anniversary uh, a year before I joined, so I just missed it. But to celebrate, they went out. Um, uh, what's the four-wheel drive and you go out on mud? Quad biking. Um, and they went pigeon shooting as well. Clay pigeon shooting. So. It's, how, it's how you sell it into What's that four-wheel drive? Uh, quad biking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did, I mean, like, just being known, Alan, so your housemate, did you both meet at Cundall and then decide to bunk up together? Yeah, yeah. So we started at the same time, 20, oh, September 2018. And but all so all the grads, we're not, none of us are grads anymore, just for the last month. But like we're all really good friends. We all go drinking together and all sort of stuff. And then we went to Lisbon just before COVID happened oh, all together. Yeah. And he moved out of his flat in July, last July. And he was like, I'm looking for a third person. And I was like, go on then. <laughs> no, we're on top of each other all the time. <laughs> cool. Thanks very much. Yes, sir entertainers so um (laughs) (laughs) i don't know how interesting it is but um one of the london partners is actually a former paintball champion and he is (laughs) and also yeah that that was my fun my key fact paintball is in here when you go around shooting people with paint Paint. yeah Yeah. it's not not all about the engineering kids (laughs) (laughs) Paintball champion mint. Like that one. <laughs> Tim, let's let's just bring some normality. <laughs> normal note for this webinar. So <laughs> I, I think that my last fact is that uh, Candle recently won an award of the Industry Influencer of the Year, um, and I, I think that it's something that we really kind of live through. I know that um, like uh, a lot of uh, locations and offices around around the world set up like quizzes, set up webinars for other engineers and for other people in in the building uh, industry but also even down to a small scale like a project that i've been working on recently that residential one that i was talking about yeah. uh, all the design team like contractors different engineers the project manager we all did a murder mystery night obviously digital oh. but like you know it was right and uh, we we organized that and we you know we uh, were able to um, network and actually talk to people on a on a just a personal level rather yeah. than uh, at work and I think that Kundal's influence stretches more than just engineering and just more than just, you know, all the different things that we do as a discipline. It's more of an ethos about how we work and about how, you know, we, you know, don't take ourselves as seriously as other engineers do sometimes. You know, we're, we're not yeah. there just to do the engineering. We're there to have fun and we're there to make the, the design process as enjoyable and as beneficial as it can be to everyone. 
I think that's really come across to him, you know, with all your individual um, personalities and things like that in this webinar, I think it has really come across that. I'm not going to take your point here, Helen and Hub, um, but, you know, it's, it's such a friendly environment. You know, you, you're getting together after work, you're living together and everything else. At the end of the day, you all seem quite like a friendly bunch as well and friends with each other um, inside and outside of work. So that's, that's a brilliant fact, and thank you very much. Um, Helen, we're going to finish with you. So... Obviously, we've spoken to the, the grads, ex-grads, um, about their, you know, their, their lives through Kundal. Um, what would you say makes a Kundal person? Is there an attribute you think, actually, yeah, we've all got this in common, apart from all being mental? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's high up there, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go for a game straight after this. <laughs> No, I think it's, it's, I guess it's, you know, bits and pieces that, that Tim has touched on as well, but it's, you know, it's their passion, it, you know, it's the passion for yeah. everything that they, that, that, you know, this is what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, I appreciate, you know, life isn't all about work, but I think when you've got that passion behind the the job that you do and the, the love, you know, the, and the development, I guess, and what you can bring to that role and the difference that you can make and the change you can make, especially in the built environment, I think goes a long way, you know, yeah. so it's, it's one of the key bits that obviously we look for whenever we do the graduate assessment centre, you know, so as, as much as you've obviously got like your communication skills, teamwork, and um, problem solving skills, things like that, it's, it's an individual sort of thirst for knowledge and development and, and that passion, ultimately, that we that we look for. And I think, it's something that is probably sort of core throughout staff at Kundal. You know, they are passionate about what they do. They are here because they believe in what they're in what they're doing on a daily basis. You know, they, they want to make a difference and that's why they're here. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's really come across as well. So, yeah, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I've really enjoyed the webinar. It's been a laugh a minute, which is, which is what it's all about <laughs> as well. And um, don't forget, everybody. Hannah's section um, on the Career Centre, go back and have a look um, at that. We've got the ebook on there and Hannah's updating and adding blogs nearly every single week with, with really good hints and tips and advice from all of the employers. Um, so definitely worth a look at that section. Um, follow Kundal, so go back, watch the webinar again, make sure you follow them. They're opening up in September. Um, so you know, make sure you're going to get that alert in the email as well. So when they do open their applications. Um, next week, I am actually having a lie down um, and <laughs> taking a break and I need it, guys. I need it. Do <laughs> not stress me out. <laughs> and next week, the, the normal Sophie and the normalish Jessica um, will be joined by CERN, which is Sophie's client. CERN, very exciting. Sophie, go for it. Who is CERN? Who's in the meeting? And what's in store? Yeah, thank you, Carla. I'm really, really excited for next week, although this week is going to be hard to top. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm so excited to welcome CERN next week to the Gradcracker webinars. Um, they are the world's leading particle physics research organisation using the most advanced experiments to understand the fundamental structure of our universe. Um, so we're going to be joined um, by a range of people from CERN, including some students and graduates, as well as a senior engineer who was actually part of the team that discovered the Higgs boson. Um, so it should be an absolutely fascinating hour, so I'm really excited. So make sure you register for that webinar on Gradcracker, and me and Jess will see you next week for that. Tim's little Tim, you're nodding along, I think you're going to join that. I thought, yeah, I'll come, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. I'll, 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 I'll attend, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I don't know the word that Sophie is saying, and Tim and all the grads like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to log on next week, Sophie, so I can completely understand all those words. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> So thank you very much, guys. I will be um, behind the scenes. Sophie will see you next week and I shall see you the week after next. So thanks, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, take care, everybody who's watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.